بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم لیڈیز اینڈ جینٹل مین بفور آئی بگن مائی پریزنٹیشن آئی ایم ایکچولی گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ اٹ ود دس لائٹ دس لائٹ آئی ایکچولی یوز فیو ایئرز اگو فار مائی پریزنٹیشن ان گلاس کو ہیلتھ بورڈ بٹ ان ٹوڈیز انوائرمنٹ دس ایکچولی ریپرزینٹ پرفیکٹلی اے ہیلتھ کیئر سسٹم ان دا ورلڈ Our healthcare system throughout the world, I'm not talking about only in Pakistan, uh, to begin with, it was overburdened, it was overstretched, and uh, a little bend around the corner, um, and it just collapsed. Um, there were few good people or Maverick were trying to salvage the situation, but I think so, pandemic made it clear the situation was beyond salvage. Um, So after this, I'm going to start uh, with my presentation. Um, so let's talk about the Ishifa. I think the title there represents the Ishifa very well. The idea of Ishifa is actually the healthcare beyond boundaries. Um, we are going beyond the boundaries of a conventional healthcare model and uh, reaching to the patient's doorstep now. I am Dr. Farhan Sari. I'm a consultant family physician. Uh, I've graduated from Rawalpindi Medical College and uh, completed my postgraduate training, first of all, in internal medicine, and then later on in uh, family medicine. I was an ex-cluster quality lead for Southeast of Glasgow, and I am a senior clinical tutor of Glasgow University. I'm currently working as a medical director of SIHD. When we talk about the healthcare innovation, um, I was reading an article in Forbes uh, and that explained it really well. Um, there are two layers of the healthcare innovation. One is the change layer. It is the cloud where the visionary ideas to transform the healthcare resides. Uh, and then there is a reality layer where actually the healthcare get delivered. And there is always a disconnect uh, between the two layers. Um, there are people, there are organizations who have got very visionary ideas, but they are not in touch with the uh, baseline uh, medical health care, actually. And there are uh, medics like us who provide the health care, and then we don't have a time to go and think about the innovation. We are very much happy with the conventional model. So there was a very little mix pre in a pre-COVID world. But then the COVID came and is actually forced us to work together. If we would have known in the past, probably um, everybody must have seen uh, Back to the Future, we probably would have never set a clock to the 2020. We would have passed it, jumped it from 19 to 21. But to be very honest, I feel that this is the year which, in which we have learned a lot. Um, the world changed, and I feel that it has changed for good. Um, we have adapted, we have learned the new ways of living, um, and there was a lot of uh, developments have developed, not only in healthcare, but in an IT sector. So there were a lot of uh, new projects and a uh, uh, lot of innovation happened throughout the world. If we talk about the HIPAA, Uh, rules and regulations that have been relaxed. Uh, if we talk about uh, the new ways of working, those have been developed. Telemedicine, which was not as in a baseline or a first line tool to uh, provide the healthcare to the, to the patients became a first uh, kind of in a contact with the patient. Um, then we developed a new way to communicate with our patients, whether it was through the social media, um, and today's meeting is probably one of the example of those. We have realized that there is not a simple conventional method we need to use. We can actually use different methods. Um, these are the list of some of the, uh, the projects which got uh, fame throughout the world. Uh, I would probably talk about the Nura Health, which was based in uh, India and Bangladesh. Uh, it developed some of the screening tools and uh, information and dissemination uh, methods. Then the system one developed in a software um, called Aspect, which was reporting about, uh, beforehand it was reporting about different infectious diseases and then it started working for the corona. And if you talk about the one world, it was operating in Central America and East Africa, and they were providing telehealth consults, screening tools and medicine delivery. So where are we going to get from here? Are we going to go back to the way we were living? 
I think that's not going to happen. The change is now inevitable. And I think so we should embrace the, this change and move forward if we want to progress in the new world. So what is eShifa and where do we stand in this new climate and new uh, world? Um, eShifa and SIHT, if you look at the word, it is actually Shifa Integrated Healthcare Technology. And I would probably explain it that way. This is related to Shifa. It has started from Shifa. It, it is, uh, it's a healthcare model which is integrated, holistic, um, and provide the healthcare beyond the boundary of the normal hospital. And it has got new innovation and technologies being a part of it. And that's what is the essence of uh, eShifa. If I'll talk about its background, um, Ishifa is not new, actually. It, uh, uh, it is, the idea was conceived um, quite a few years ago. And uh, many people remember that the telemedicine project was started and they have connected the Kabul hospital and Git Git Baltistan uh, with the Shifa International. And probably at that time, they had all the tools uh, to think about it, how they are going to connect with their patients uh, outside this hospital. So this is definitely not in a new idea. Uh, whether it's novel, again, it's not novel. And many people have said how you are going to make it possible. I remember uh, during my first meeting uh, with Dr. Zishan and uh, when we were all sitting and we were talking about it, he explained it as an, an Uber of healthcare. And actually that's what it is. It stuck into our minds that that's what we want to take it to a new level. So, uh, and many people were thinking how it's going to be possible. Um, so I'm going to, in the next few slides, basically tell you how we made it possible, um, and thankfully we are successfully running it now. So Shifa Integrated Home Care is unique, and uh, I'm proud to say it is unique because it's not your normal healthcare provision or a home health services. There are many of our competitors are actually um, working and they're providing the medicines to the patient at home or providing some kind of a nursing care to the patients at home. But what we are providing, we're providing a holistic care. We are connected to a tertiary care hospital at uh, back end. Our care doesn't stop then and there, our care is related to the, to the, at the back end to an tertiary care hospital. We used a quite innovative idea. We gone beyond the conventional model and we have used and integrated the technology with it. When I say it's cost effective, it is actually cost effective if you think from the patient's perspective. They are getting the same kind of services um, or same standard of the services at their home um, and at the same cost. Uh, and it is low risk. Uh, it's low risk because the patient don't get exposed to all, all kinds of an infections in the hospital. And think about the, your family and yourself. It's a traveling cost. It's the hassle sitting in, in, in a busy clinic. Patient can be saved from that. Who can use it? Um, anybody. Anybody can use it, whether it's you, whether it's me, whether it's our children, whether it's our parents, grandparents. Anybody can use it. And... Uh, uh, and that's the beauty of it, actually. Uh, if you think about um, your elderly parents or grandparents, how much time we have to uh, spend to bring them to the hospital, uh, how much hassle it causes to the whole family. I know as the culturally, we, we love to do for our elders, but at the same time, it causes a lot of inconvenience for them as well especially moving, say, a dementia patient or a frail elderly um, gentleman from the comfort of their home and bringing them to the hospital and then sitting there and waiting for an, a doctor appointment is definitely not everybody's cup of tea. Then uh, I famously give an example of a busy mom because I am a mom myself and we have got thousand things in our plates and the healthcare or um, our own health needs is probably the last on our priority list. Um, so we wanted to make it easy for the patients to access the healthcare, um, and that's what was the the aim of it. So when we thought about it, we felt like, what is the easiest way to get the services or contact um, uh, any healthcare provider? 
and we would ideally would like it should be in a one click away where we can just book it in a blink of a second and we can get somebody at our doorstep um, so um, I can say that your wish is my command and probably you don't need to rub a uh, lamp to get a genie uh, don't wish for a Will Smith. We are not going to send a Will Smith to your house, but we can definitely arrange for a healthcare provider to come to your house. So that's the face of the eShifa app. Um, if you log into it, uh, it will pick up your location automatically. Then in a very simple few step, you can select the date and time uh, of your choice. Um, you can then select uh, I have this screen is showing the lab test, but then you can select on the rest of the services, which I'm going to talk about. Um, you can simply pick it up, choose your test, put any instruction if you want to, uh, attach a prescription, and then um, if you want to record a message, you can do that. And there you go. The, your wish is granted and the, the service has been booked. You can book it for yourself. You can book it for any of your family member. Um, we, had, we were taking it payment by the cash, but uh, I'm happy to say that uh, with the PayPro and uh, our merchant gateway, uh, the integration is in the last stages, so we will be able to get in a transfer online. We are still catering it, but I think it will be available in, on our app pretty soon. And then you can get a confirmation. But that's not the only method to, to book uh, the service or uh, um, to access our, uh, our healthcare. Because we have noticed that many patients are not that tech savvy. Many patients would like to talk to somebody because they get a reassurance by talking to somebody and that's how things are. So um, keeping that in mind, uh, we have actually developed in a communication hub. Um, so each of our uh, services can be booked by calling our helpline, or you can simply call at the hospital appointment line and choose an option number four, and that will take you to the home health. Um, or you can call from the inside the hospital, you can call our coordinator at extension number 4332. So if the one slide which I would like you to remember is probably this slide, how to get in touch with us. And once you will get in touch with any of our team member, we will all be happy to help you. That was in a beautiful poster, which has been displayed on our billboard these days. And that actually um, been designed by our marketing team. And it represents and covers most of the services, but we are not limited to only these. We are much more than that. And I'm going to explain that in the next few slides. So how does the system work? Very simply, the job will be generated through an app or through a communication hub then it will uh, get assigned to one of the healthcare provider. Patient will receive a few notifications during the process, one at the time of their registration, then at the time of the booking their job, then they will get at the time of uh, um, assignment. And when the healthcare provider leave for their house, when they reach there, when they start the job and when they complete the job. So if you, think about the cream or Uber, that's what it is, that you will actually be able to track the whole um, field movement of the healthcare provider. Then at a job completion, um, the bill or invoice can be generated for the patient. Then the sample get progressed, uh, processed, and then the reports are available. But it's not only limited to the, to the reporting of the simple lab samples. Um, we do a lot more than that. Um, so uh, if in the next few slides, I'll explain about it. Let's talk about some of the service lines. So first of all, uh, phillibotomy, that's the first one we started. Uh, it works from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, there are a lot of patients ask about whether the panel patients get catered or not. Yes, they do. Um, and the same panel rate actually apply for, for them. It can be booked on the same day. Um, there is no service charge. There was initially a service charge, but uh, we have scrapped it now. Um, so the tests are actually available at the same um, price as you get it in within a hospital uh, building or at one of our LPP. So the patients can get it done at the comfort of their home at the same price actually. Um, and the result availability is through our patient portal. Um, we are integrating it through our app and can be accessed through the text message as well. Now home nursing, I must say this 
service has worked brilliantly during a pandemic. Um, it's uh, 9 to 8 p.m., but our team has worked beyond those working hours uh, in emergency situation. Um, it's a procedure-based service, um, so it's, we don't provide a long-term care to the to the patient for their daily routine healthcare needs. Um, it's more for for any of the procedure which they need, um, such as IV cannulation, IV fluids provision, catheterization, um, and dressing, etc. We ideally wanted to be booked at least a day in advance, but uh, in a pandemic, we have realized that it is mostly been booked on the day. And uh, as I said, that our team has worked very hard and they were happy um, to provide the services to the patient, even on a very short notice. Um, this can be a very crucial part of the discharge planning. And uh, uh, I think so in the future, that will be very helpful service. Home pharmacy, we are uh, usually deliver it next day, but uh, again, in a pandemic, we have done uh, our fast track pharmacy delivery and it, the samples were delivered on the same day within few hours. Um, the service charge for it is only 300 within a city. It can be delivered all over Pakistan and the delivery rate um, depends upon the city and the size of the package. Um, our pharmacy team um, has mint, uh, maintained or developed a mechanism of developing, uh, maintaining the cold chain. The bulky items can be delivered, such as for a peritoneal dialysis, the, the, the items are of few hundred kgs and we are delivering it and we are delivering it throughout the Pakistan. Teleconsult, probably this is one of the services which everybody is using in a hospital at a moment and uh, patients are um, seen in a comfort of their home through the, through the telelink. So I think that probably all of are very much familiar with this. Home vaccination for children. Um, that's one of the, the very highly rated uh, product or service line which we developed during a pandemic. Um, it is done in a collaboration with the pediatric department and pediatric department is actually leading this service. Um, again, it's been booked through the, through the same number. We have actually vaccinated more than 200 children in last two months and 30 to four more, more children have been lined up. Our team uh, goes on a Wednesday and Saturday to in the different areas of the Twin City. Uh, it's a pre-booked service and uh, they vaccinate children. Pharmacy is working in a close collaboration uh, with our vaccination team. And then a lot more people are available in that team, such as a few people from the finance department, OPT department, and as I said, that pediatric department is leading it. Um, the feedback for this service was amazing and uh, uh, people have commented the professional and uh, um, uh, very, uh, we have developed SOPs and uh, everybody has actually praised this service throughout, this, throughout the city. Now, this is the one thing which uh, we are really proud of uh, and we have developed that during uh, the crisis situation. But this is not, a, again, a new idea. Hospital at home and the virtual hospital uh, was actually in a thought or an um, idea of the past. This article, if you look at, that was from 2013. And hospital at home, and is, the title actually says hospital at home patient care model of the future. Then I think so we are in the future because that's now the reality. John Hopkins actually um, started working on, on it in 2014 and uh, they developed um, the idea of the hospital at home for elderly and frail patients. When we, um, were, when we were stuck by the pandemic and the bed shortage was there and there were a lot of people who were trying to um, access the health services, we realized that uh, the conventional model will not be enough to provide the services to our patients. And we need to, to do something different. Um, so this was actually in pipeline. We were already ready for it. We had most of our services line were already being developed. We were already having the teleconsults. So um, the, the platform was ready and we just actually launched it at that point. And we developed the COVID home monitoring service. The objective of uh, this service was to reduce the pressure on our emergency de uh, department and to reduce the pressure um, on our healthcare due to the non-availability of bed. 
we also knew that if we start monitoring patients from the early stages, then probably we will be able to, to prevent deterioration. And secondly, we, did, we thought that if we will pick up these patients on an early stage, we will probably be able to manage them better. It also provided us in a framework through, through which we can do uh, uh, safety netting and we can provide a full holistic care to our patients. And I must say, the patients love the idea. Um, the patients have uh, used it uh, for many days, and uh, the recovery rate was very, very high. Uh, hopefully, our article will come soon, and we will be able to share that data with, uh, with the rest of the team or with the whole hospital. So what was this service line? It was actually, uh, we started it with a three-day kind of an, uh, package initially, and we decided to do three visits um, in over the three days. That also included the six teleconsults with the doctor, three consults with the consultant, and uh, three consults with the PG. Um, so it was in an idea of, we developed an idea of a virtual ward. We actually made a unit. We assigned a coordinator to those units who were actually uh, liaisoning with the patient and arranging everything for them uh, according to the plan of the doctor. We initially started with the three-day package, as, as I said, but later on we thought that rather than giving it a name of a package and assigning the days to it, we should actually go day by day and give some flexibility to the patients and to the clinicians. And we extended it accordingly. So um, the package was 18,000 to begin with. Again, we converted it to the one day, so it was a 6,000 in one day. Now, what was included in, it, included in it was not only this. There were a few other services which we were providing to the patient beyond, beyond this, and that included the nursing care to them. If they needed any kind of an IV, we were providing it, we were providing it to them. We were providing them, to them uh, any kind of a pharmacy delivery, any lab sampling, lab monitoring, and we were also um, uh, giving them oxygen at home. So we, we were providing them with the concentrator. Um, and overall, it has actually worked really well. So the process started with the enrollment. So anybody who was getting discharged from the emergency department or from our IPD or from the OPD um, department after positive results, we offered them to get enrolled into this service. The initial assessment was um, very important where they had the first consult with the doctor, where they took in a full history of the patient and risk to justify uh, them. Then after that, they had a daily assessment by a consultant and by RPG. And I must thank to all of them because they have worked really hard. They have worked beyond their working hours and helped their patients. Uh, and they have actually came up as a team. And that not only includes the consultant and our postgraduate tra trainees, it also included our coordinator and rest of the admin team. Um, so um, I think so. I really appreciate all their efforts. As I said, that according to the needs of the patient, uh, labs, medication delivery was being arranged for them, oxygen was being arranged, and a lot of uh, support was uh, provided to these patients. Then after that, once they are better, after monitoring their progress, the patients were discharged. And the feedback for this was really good. We have actually uh, catered a very big number, and I'll share all the number with you in, in a few minutes. So if you'll see at this um, slide, that's how we actually uh, uh, visualize it in the beginning. Enrolling, then all everything was being explained to the patient by a coordinator, which was assigned to them. Then the first clinical consultation, and then we were dividing a patient to the high risk or low risk categories. And then we were modifying the whole uh, package according to their need. Uh, we were providing them with the safety netting. We were explaining the uh, red flag symptoms to them. And we were ensuring that their progress is monitored in a way that we can pick them up at an early stages of deterioration. Okay, before I go to the next slide, there are a few more services which I'm going to explain. Um, I would say that so far we have actually managed 200 patients through this service. Uh, and slowly and gradually, the, the, the number is going down for the COVID and throughout the country. And our number is going down as well. But through this model, we have learned quite a few things and which will be applicable in coming years or in coming days for all of us. 
So when I talk about learning from there, we thought that if we can monitor patients at home, then probably we can do few, we can provide them few other services. Now, nephrology department actually took a lead on peritoneal dialysis. Um, Dr. Kiran and Dr. Faria came up with this idea um, and they started this brilliant service. It started at end of June and we again started it for the Twin Cities. Now what happens that once the patient gets discharged after uh, a peritoneal catheter insertion, they go to the home, they need some training. Um, so the nursing staff can actually go to the patient home and provide them an education and training in their home for three days. Uh, and then later on, from time to time, they need and the help of the nursing staff and nursing staff can go to the patient home, can change the uh, extension tube according to the needs of the patient and provide the rest of the education. Now they develop or maintain a virtual consult with the consultant if needed so. And again, the pharmacy can be delivered to the patient. The lab test can be done. Um, so far, uh, we put the patients who have been uh, gone through the service, they were very happy. Um, the palliative care was the next service which we started during this time as well. Uh, we have got one patient uh, who is on an end of life pathway uh, and he's been uh, she's been managed at home. And then we have got two patients who are enrolled to the services, but they are stable, but they can actually get in touch with their coordinator from time to time if they have any healthcare need. Dr. Aktis is uh, leading this service. So if I'll talk about the statistics, these are the few of the statistics or the few of the figures which I would like to share. Um, from teleconsultation point of view, it's a huge number. Um, it's a 12,559. This data is from the last week. Um, nursing procedure 112, and the service was started at end of May. Home vaccination was started again at the end of May, and 297 actually uh, children have been uh, been given a new vaccination so far. Home lab 2,229. This was the first service line uh, which was developed. Um, then pharmacy again started at the end of May, and um, 662 uh, pharmacies have been delivered on the same day or the next day, um, and throughout the Pakistan, as I said. Home admission, it's 174 was last week. We have number was actually 12 patients were current, were admitted at that point. So it's nearly 200 um, that the patients that have been admitted or gone through this service. Peritoneal dialysis, only one patient, new patient has been catered through this service. Uh, we have supplied the oxygen to the 14 patients during a pandemic. Um, and we are proud to say that we are going to start chemotherapy um, by uh, this week or next week, we are all set to go um, in that area now. And home physiotherapy was a very well-established service, but we have uh, stopped it during a pandemic. Now, the projects which we have got in pipeline is, uh, um, number one is the chemotherapy, as I said. The second is post-surgical care. And uh, we would love to work with our surgical colleagues to develop this service line. Post discharge care, it has already started in few of the areas. Um, the one thing which probably we can think of is the chronic disease review planning. So there are many chronic disease patients come to the clinic, but they need um, quite a lot of work up before they turn up to the to the clinic. So can we do something about it? Can we arrange uh, or develop some kind of a mechanism where all these um, tick box uh, exercise can be done before they uh, enter into the hospital premises? So I can say that yes, that can be done. We we need to we need to work together uh, to take it to a next level. Uh, postpartum care will be another interesting area which we can look into, and the neurology department is actively uh, exploring the venue of the teleneurology and telestroke, so hopefully that will be launched soon. I think that we should talk about the discharge planning at this platform at this moment, because discharge planning is in a very important and in integral part of admission. The patient management at care is not complete unless and until we do a successful discharge planning for the patient. We don't want to provide the care to the patient only when they are within a boundary of this hospital. We want to honor our patient after they have left the hospital even. We want to maintain a contact with, with them. We want them to be proud of being, being a part of Shifa family or getting in a service from the Shifa healthcare. So 
to keeping that in mind, um, what we thought that if the patient get discharged from here, if we work on their discharge planning, if the patient uh, get referred to the eShifa team for, for any kind of a healthcare need, such as if they need the blood arrangement of any follow-up with the, with the clinician, that can be done. Our team can then communicate with the family or with the patient and make an, a plan with them after, after a discharge. Uh, and we can provide a holistic care to the patient. So say if uh, uh, post-surgical, a patient is going to get discharged and need a dressing for seven days, need an antibiotics for five days, they need a blood after fifth day, and they need a review by a consultant on a 10th day, then we usually tell patient, now if he, that patient get referred to the eShifa team, we will ensure that all this happen for a patient in a community. Um, and the appointment with the consultant then get arranged. And everything is usually been provided to the consultant. Our whole plan is usually been in place for the patient. When the patient come back to the clinic, the consultant can actually see the progress. So that makes a full holistic care or comprehensive health care plan for the patient. And I think that will give an reassurance not only to the patient and family, but to the medical team as well, that the patient being followed up and in a way it should be. And I think so that's what we would like for our own family members and for ourselves. So um, I think so we need to extend it to, for our patients. So I think so that's what we need to move forward in this direction. And if we do that, I think so, we will be able to get quite a good, uh, better outcomes for, uh, uh, for our patients. So I would say that if it's not in an individual person work, it's always the team which works and perform. And if the team sees herself as a winner, then they perform as a winner. And I'm proud to say um, that our team has worked really hard um, throughout, uh, not only in a pandemic, but even before that. Our visions were very clear. We adapted. Uh, we were flexible. Um, so uh, our team has included the management part of it, where, in which where quite a lot of people from the management are involved. Um, the, our clinical team, I must say that you are all are leading the clinical teams. All the clinicians are leading the clinical teams. Uh, so oncology services will be led by the oncology department. Surgical services will be led by the surgical department. Palliative care will be led by the palliative team. And vice versa, even all the medical departments will be led by, uh, by their consultants. We are going to act as an abridge for you and between you and your patients when your patients are in a community. We want to maintain that link for your patients and you will be leading all these services um, uh, for your patients. Uh, we have gotten a very active finance team um, and we are thankful to them. Our IT team has worked very closely with us and developed uh, a few very good um, service lines or few very component dashboards for us. Um, definitely when we will grow, there will be complaints and there will be issues. We would love to get any feedback and suggestion from all of you and from our patients. You can contact uh, um, in an MSA to us. You can actually um, send in an email um, on complain at eshifa.org um, or you can contact on a uh, helpline at 4332 um, and can register your complaint and we will get back to you. So I'll conclude my presentation here. Um, if you have any questions, you can actually ask now. So thank you so much. OK, so um, there was a question. Is there a nursing service for blood transfusion? We thought about it, and we thought very hard. Uh, we are not providing a blood transfusion to the, to the patient at home uh, because we felt it is to develop that service we need to have in a very robust system in place to manage any complication. So, so far, we haven't started the blood transfusion. Um, there was an, a question about nursing care will be available in Jung. No, at the moment, it's not. But as uh, we are planning to expand in other cities, so hopefully we will be, be able to have a footprint of Shifa all over the country. So at the moment, it's not available, but yes, I'm sure that in the future we will be able to. Thank you so much. And best of luck for everybody. Thank you.